Hello to you. My name is Maria Kongelska and you are watching Poland Daily Culture. Today we will reveal some secrets about the royal castle in Warsaw. Uh, with me is Alicia Jakubowska, the curator of the castle. Hello. And madam, you taking care of the pictures and the portraits and all the paintings which are here in this great building, which of course is not an easy task. And I've heard you've recently done another purchase of some great piece of art. And that is what? And that is another painting by Bernardo Bellotto known as Canaletto. We are extremely happy that we could acquire that work of art because it actually um, was present in the Red Castle in 18th century. So we have uh, with us today another work that comes from the rare collection and that is really well preserved and we can admire again a beautiful painting which was created for that place by an artist who was staying here in the rare castle. So again, you extended your vast collection of Canaletto. Exactly. Bernardo Bellotto pictures with another one. What is it picturizing? Right. As I said before, we have a collection of um, paintings by Bernardo Bellotto, which depict Warsaw. But that one, that newly acquired painting, depicts Rome, Italy. What's the connection? Uh, we may ask. I must say that at the very beginning the idea of, uh, of the king of Stanislav August was to have a room with views of Rome and this is uh, one of dead paintings. So it was uh, painted before the views of Warsaw were created and um, there were um, few more views of, of, of Rome uh, and um, in later years they were just replaced by the views of Warsaw. Just like other works of art, um, that view of the capital here was sold by um, the family of, of the king. But fortunately we were able to, to buy it recently and we present it, you may, you may see it um, next to the King's studio on the first floor in the King's apartments and uh, it's a beautiful view of a, of a Roman um, capital hill with um, Santa Maria in Araceli charge. Um, again, a very picturesque, uh, amazing view of uh, Rome in 18th century. So it was commissioned by the last Polish king, Stanisław August Poniatowski. So he, from his private chambers, could, I would say, go to a small journey to Rome because through this picture uh, made by, by Benelotto and it was created here in Warsaw. Right. And right now it was able to come back to Warsaw. Uh, where was it? Where did he spend his time in the painting, I mean? <laughs> uh, from, from whom did we purchase it? We do not know much. Uh, many paintings just uh, seem that they like disappeared. They went to, they were sold to private collectors. We do not know much. Some were, we know that uh, some were taken to Russia and they were sold there. So we have some clues that that painting could be also for some time in Russia. But then, like at the turn of the 20th century, again, many works due to some historical events, um, some, some sad events were again sold and they were acquired um, by the collectors from another European countries. We do not really know much and it was purchased from a private uh, collection. This is how it came to the Red Castle. Very beautiful painting. And it is right now back here, and we can see that we have a full collection of other Canaletto paintings. Uh, and what is, when it comes, because of course there are many other paintings here in the castle, small ones, big ones, oil paintings, uh, or just 
uh, sketches, so a lot of things. I would say it's not possible to talk about everything. But if you would like to point one, uh, one out of them uh, for our viewers also to take a special interest, what would it be? Well, I have no doubts about it. This is the girl by Rembrandt van Rijn. So this is such a special painting, so realistic, so illusionistic, that movement, like a photography, and if you approach the painting, it seems that even that faint frame that was painted on, on the surface of the painting, that it like, it seems that it disappears and you are staying face in face. To, to a real girl, to a real person, and she's smiling gently, which is a bit like Mona Lisa, and this is why actually that painting acquired that nickname of Warsaw Mona Lisa, and it was by Professor Ernst van de Wettering, a great um, uh, researcher who, who gave her that name, Warsaw Mona Lisa, because of that uh, mysterious smile. We do not know much about her, we do not know who she was, if, we, we do not even know if it was a real person, but she definitely seems to be here with us, crossing that border between the world of art and our world. So this is what is really great about the work. It's really great about works by Rembrandt. Uh, this is art for everyone, regardless if you have vast knowledge, even if you're not much interested in the in world of art, you just come and see. You may have your own feelings about that paintings, and this is what was, as we think today, important for, for Raman himself to transfer those, those feelings. In the case of the girl, rather really positive because of the gentle smile and that, um, that will just to, to connect with us, to, to stay with us. So very beautiful. What I've seen also, another painting that is here, and it's not great when it comes to cultural element of it, but there, do you have one of the most famous portraits of Anna Jagiellonka, who was a Polish king and there later a queen, because she was a wife of Batara. And she is portrayed as one of the ugliest Polish queen in the history. When it comes to the outer appearance, well, I'm, I'm an art historian, so I may judge whether a painting is beautiful or not. But this is not, I think, this is not the right approach. She was really like a great woman, regardless of her appearance, and she was a queen and she had um, many, many um, really assets. Uh, she was like a strong personality and um, well, the way she's, um, like she's dressed, it was the style of, of um, well. Those times. Of her time, so this is our, our like, um, I don't know, that myth that she was, um, I don't know, maybe just opinions that she was ugly or, well, not, not very beautiful. Well, it does not impress me really a lot because what I'm focusing on is just her personality and her deeds. So that's, that's what, what's and really the, important. Yes, and then one of the most popular and important picture, which is in every history book, uh, is here located yes. in the Royal Castle. We, we have uh, some paintings that are really present like in every history book, which um, is really known by like every child uh, in a Polish school, because well, we have uh, paintings by Jan Matejko, a famous Polish um, painter who depicted um, important events from Polish history. Today we see the history through his paintings. Here we have the constitution of Maj the Third and, and some other ba um, King Badr at Pskov, portraits of Polish kings, and again you may find them like everywhere in every history book um, which tells the history of Poland. So indeed we have like not only one, but many, many, many paintings that are to be found in historical books. When you come to the Royal Castle of Warsaw, you can go through amazing portraits and amazing paintings, which are not only a cultural journey, but also a lesson in history, because they portrayed one of the most important figures, kings, queens, or events in the Polish history. 
All of this is gathered here in the Royal Castle of Warsaw. So come, don't waste any time and visit this place. And thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture.